Hey, what's good, YouTube? My name is Harris Sang, and you're watching another episode of BRG MX5. In today's episode, we're gonna do another round of wheels and tires because, as you can probably guess, I got new rims and tires. Something else you might be wondering is where am I right now? Because this doesn't look like the normal broke BRG headquarters and the real answer because it's not. I moved in uh, probably a month ago now which explains the lack of videos um, and basically it's a yeah it's a new house, new location and new headquarters. Check it out. Here is the not so finished garage HQ. Um, yes it is dark outside so I'll get another shot of it in the daylight but this is the MX-5, um, the hard top is no longer on top, actually it's funny, funny story. I swapped my black hard top with a NB green, which is a different color, it's like a metallic green, not the same as BRG as an NA. Um, so yeah, that's changed, um, I sold the big wing, the big wing, the big wing is no more, and the, probably the most obvious is these rims. These are a Buddy Club P1 Racing, I believe. Um, it's usually on a Honda. Um, the specs on the on them are 15 by 7, 4 by 114.3 of 45 positive offset, and it's currently running 195-50-15s. Now, there's already some changes that I had to do to the car to make these guys work. Um, because the MX-5, the NAs anyways, are 4x100, I needed to get adapters for it to fit the 4x114.3. Um, and those adapters are 25 mils thick. So the effective offset is 20. Yeah, because 45 minus 25 is 20. So um, it's a little bit more inset than my previous setup with the rough wheels. But um, I'm going for the whole meaty tire look. As you can see, this is the same size tire that I was running um, with my old setup. But it's one and a half inches smaller than my previous rim. So a little bit inset, but the same size tire. So it's kind of, yeah, I know, I'm really digging it. And you're probably wondering what's this uh, little tan thing going on. But, um, well, these rims didn't come with center caps. Um, so what I did was I just 3D printed... Um, a test center cap and it fits pretty well so I might make three more for all other side. Um, anyway, uh, so this video is kind of a chop and change really because um, when I added the adapters uh, they are aluminum and the hub of the car is steel. Now you don't want aluminum and steel contacting each other as much as possible but if you have to because they're dissimilar metals, you need to put some protective um, protective force field. Um, and in, in my case, it's a, it's in my foot well, but it's anyway, it's anti-seize. So this video will just be showing you more about the wheel, the anti-seize behind the adapter, and how to properly install adapters, I guess. Because, yeah, watched a lot of videos online, and some of them were good, some of them were bad. Uh, well, I'll just show you what my take is on adapters on cars. So, you want to run adapters or spacers, do you? Well, I've got a uh, list of things that you need to be aware of and need to do if you want to run these bad boys over here. The first thing you need to be aware of is every car has a hub size. And for the NA MX-5, it is 54.1 millimeters in diameter you must run a hub centric ring and if this guy has it yes it does it has 67.1 to 54.1 so this guy sits in nice and flush there see how there's no movement now you can get adapters or spacers that don't have that locating feature and what you're going to do, what you're going to get is this guy vibrating all around and that's not a good time. Once you have your wheel off, you want to dress the surface of the brake rotor with a scouring pad. You can use a steel brush if you wish, just as long as you get this surface nice and clean. 
once the surface is clean, go ahead and put some anti-seize onto the surface here because steel and aluminum don't mix well together and they will merge, they will fuse if left long enough. So that anti-seize is just to help it remove it, remove the spacer or adapter when you go and change your brake rotor. Once you got your surface prepped with anti-seize, go ahead and put your hub centric ring and then your adapter or spacer. Make sure you move it around so you can get even spread of the anti-seize. Now at this point, I want you to stop. I want you to take a look at the old studs. Do they poke out? outside of the adapter or spacer. So if you look very closely, my studs do stick out of the adapter. That is not a good thing because some aftermarket wheels do not allow bolt spacing or bolt holes behind the rim this way. Um, and what that would do is that these studs will push on the wheel instead of the wheel being flush on this flat flat surface. So if you do check and you have studs sticking out, go ahead and grind it down with a flapper disc. Now here's a tip. Before you start grinding down the studs, put your nuts inside all the way in. Um, to, the reason why you do that is that once you've grinded it down, the threads on the outside closest to the camera will be ruined and when you back out the nuts it will create new threads and thus making it easy to put the nut back on. Put on your safety glasses and hearing protection. Now the MX-5 lugs are pretty good in the sense that they had a little indentation in the middle um, so what I did was I just grounded the end of the stud till I couldn't see that uh, hole and we'll put back the adapter to see if it clears the face. Okay, I've put it on and had a look from the top. Uh, it seems that maybe three of the studs still have a little bit poking out, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the grinder again to make sure that it's fully flat. All right, now because we are working on the front of the car, uh, there is no handbrake for you to lock this hub in while you're torquing down the nuts. So, what you do is get a long piece of metal bar and lock the lock the nuts uh, like uh. <clears throat> trying to do this one-handed like so so you got it on the ground lock it to the right so the stick is pointing to the right that way you can get your torque wrench or your your breaker bar and tighten the nuts without it spinning Just like any wheel nut, you want to tighten it in a star fashion. I'm going to start with 50 newtons, then go up to 85, and then finally finish with 100 newton meters. So you think you're done? Well, I can tell you there are two things missing. From the adapter to your rim, it also must have a hub-centric ring. So this guy needs a ring to fit onto whatever aftermarket wheel you're running. Make sure that you have another set because just like between the hub and the adapter or spacer, you, you don't want that vibration. Just because you put one between the hub and the adapter, 
doesn't mean it applies to this. So when you buy a spacer, a bolt-on, well, any spacer really, or adapter, make sure it comes with hub-centric feature or it just fits your car. It, it, it just slots in with no wiggle room without the nuts. So hub-centric ring on the outside, hub-centric ring on the inside with, that fits your aftermarket wheel. That's number one. The second point is because this is aluminum and this is steel, this metal will soften or sort of relax over time. So after about a hundred kilometers of driving with your setup, you want to go back in here and tighten them back up. Retorque them down with the same torque spec you did on your wheel nuts. So in my case, it was 105 Newton meters. You want to take your wheel off and then re-tighten these guys. You can put Loctite on the threads, but if you have to torqued down the nuts to the right spec, that shouldn't happen because you don't put Loctite on any wheel nuts before the adapter. So what's the difference between putting it on now and then? You could, but you don't have to. I just prefer to use the mechanical advantage of the torque and these bolts stretch over time. So you gotta make sure you tighten these bad boys down in a hundred kilometers later. All right, the wheels are now back from the tire shop. Thank you to my friend Miao Lin for doing that. There's one other there and there's two more behind the car. But um, yeah, before we square away these tires and rims, I'm gonna tighten up the four nuts on the adapter and the hub to 105 newton meters just in case. And that is it. The adapters and the wheels are now properly installed. Do not forget to tighten the nuts on the adapters to the hub one, one kilometer, 100 kilometers after driving just to make sure that they're all settled. And that is it. Thank you for watching. If you if you appreciated this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down and tell me why. And be sure to subscribe for more videos. Peace.